14 years ago when I got my second chance to be a photographer, this was my lighting kit. This and a 60 inch umbrella. And I got a lot of work done with this. And this is what I had, this is what I could afford, and I had to make it work with this, a Vivitar 285. Since then, my lighting kits have evolved. I've added larger lights, I've tried different systems, I was with Ellen Chrome for a while, I did Alien Bees, I did da 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 da, all these different kinds of flashes and lights, and I finally have a system that I love. And it is one cohesive system from my hot shoe flashes to my larger strobes. And I'm gonna walk you through my bag here and talk about the gear. This is the Think Tank Logistics Manager bag, and this is my bag of lights. I take this on every job. I mostly do location work, and so this is always packed, ready to go whenever I need to leave on a shoot. Let me walk you through it. Typically, the first thing up top is my Tether Tools tethering table, which is not in this bag at the moment, but that usually sits right here on top. And inside of here, I've moved everything to Fotix. Now, I used to have Nikon flashes, then I tried the Young Yo flashes, and uh, I did uh, Luma Pro flashes for a while, and the Luma Pros were great. But what I was looking for was one system that had one trigger that ruled everything. Because I was constantly traveling with this, well, I had one Indra and I had a couple Alien Bs or an Einstein and the Indra had one battery pack and charger and the Alien B had this other one. And I was kind of traveling with the Fotix Indra for a while because I wanted to make sure that it could keep up with the travel, that it could live in an airplane and work whenever I landed. And I had, uh, my last flashes were Luma Pro, and I had pocket wizards that kind of ran everything. And that was kind of a pain because I always had to have a pocket wizard on a flash and a pocket wizard on my camera and a pocket wizard on the strobe and keep up with all the sync cords and all of that. And I really wanted one system with one trigger that, that worked with everything. So the main things in this kit are three Indra heads. I have two Indra 500s and I have one Indra 360 and I have battery packs for each of those. So these are the larger battery packs that come with the Indra 500. When I'm flying, I take the battery off and I keep the battery in my checked bag. They're lightweight, they're small, they easily fit in with my camera gear. I've always gotten them stopped and swabbed at TSA, but I've never been stopped from carrying them on board, uh, knock on wood. And then I also have the smaller 360 uh, Indra battery that powers the 360, but it can also power the 500 as well. So I have three strobe heads and I have three battery packs. And my experience so far with all the shoots that I've done, and I've done dozens of shoots out on location with this kit and I have yet to run the batteries out for a day of shooting. I've gotten close to running them low on a full day of shooting but for pretty much everything I have shot these battery packs have done great for me. For Hot Shoe Flash I've gone with the Fotix Metros system. This is the Metros Plus and the thing that I love about this is they have the Fotix receivers for the triggering system built into all of them. The Indra, the Hot Shoe Flash, everything. And currently I'm using the Stratos 2 trigger to trigger all of these. So if I've got a shoot where I need to set up a couple of strobes, but maybe I need a few Hot Shoe Flashes off for accent lights or something like that, they all work on the same system. And I can set them up to different groups. 
all on the same channel or different channels or vice versa. The one thing missing from this system for me is a trigger, is a, is a transmitter that can control all the lights remotely from camera. Now, if I was shooting Canon or Nikon or Sony, then I could trigger all of that from one of their Odin transmitters. But I shoot phase one primarily and Fuji secondarily. And currently they do not have a universal transmitter that can control power output and all of that from anything other than a Canon or a Sony or a Nikon. And that sucks. And I'm really hoping that a universal transmitter is going to come out soon. And that's gonna make my kit perfect. So in this logistics manager, I have five lights. There are three strobes and there are two hot shoe flashes. Each have their battery packs. And then I have some accessories. I have the standard seven inch reflectors for the strobes, three of those in here. I have some standard seven inch grids for those reflectors. And then I recently picked up off of Amazon two of these. And I have really kind of fallen in love with these. These are the Bowens mount Fresnels that you can find on Amazon. I'll give a link below in the description and in, in this blog post that you can find it. But they're Bowens mount. And I'm going to talk about the Bowens mount in just a minute when I talk about uh, modifiers because the Bowens mount was a big reason why I went with Fotix. This little Fresnel is focusable. It has a glass lens in it and it has a few pop-in filters. You can simply gaff tape some filters into it, but it comes with a few filters that can pop in to the front. And it's kind of like a variable grid, so to speak, but it gives a really nice quality of light. It's a very hard spotlight kind of look with a very nice soft but quick fall off around the edges. I have two of those in here. Typically I keep the mag mod mag sphere uh, in here. I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, in fact, actually, I won't talk about that. I will do a whole video on just my MagMod stuff. But I have two of these Fresnel lenses in here. I have the Mag Beam. Again, I'll do a, a whole just video on MagMod stuff that I like. And various other little accoutrement, 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 uh, MagMod stuff. Up here, I have my cables. They're the power cables for the Indra heads. I have spare tether cables, USB cables, various little grips and tools and things like that. In the front pocket here, I keep a little 32 inch pop open reflector. Uh, you never know when you need a reflector. And this has been kind of great. I have a Lee Filters uh, gel pack and I keep various strips of gaff tape on this. And it comes with your standard CTBs and CTOs and straws and some you know, creative color gels. Um, and uh, this has just been an awesome little pack of gels to keep with me. And it lives in this front pocket. So that's my bag of lights. Three strobes, two flashes, batteries for all of it, a couple Fresnels, some reflectors, grids, various cables, and all of that that I need. This comes in right at, right at, give or take a pound, 50 pounds. So I don't have any problems flying with it. And it has been an awesome location bag for me. And the lights have been fantastic. Let me show you now my modifiers that I've been traveling with. Ugh. This comes in uh, right at 50 pounds as well. So my, my lighting is 100 pounds of stuff. All right, let me open this up. And let me get a light. This thing is packed to the nines and it's starting to fall apart on me. I've had it for, I don't know, I guess six years or so. And it has been all over the world with me and it is packed absolutely um, as full as I can pack it. And this has everything in here that will get me in or out of whatever photographic situation I need with lighting. 
So let me pack, unpack some of this stuff. I have a small little Manfrotto tripod. I don't recall the, uh, it's the 055 CX Pro 3. I have one of those. I need a bigger, heavier weight tripod than this because the, the phase one, when this thing gets fully extended, the phase one on it, especially if I put my pano head on it, it's uh, right at that range of wanting to fall over. Um, and I don't like that. But of course, I don't know where I would stick a larger tripod in here at the moment. This is the really right stuff. Um, base of my pano head, so that's on there. I recently picked up this Manfrotto boom stand, and this thing is awesome. So this is the Manfrotto 420B, and it acts as a standard light stand, like we all use. So the Manfrotto 420B, standard light stand, but it has the ability to become a boom which is really nice for a small compact light stand. You typically need to put some sort of counterweight. So I travel with a sandbag, but inside of the sandbag are typical grip pieces I need, like clamps and super clamps and things like that. And for hot shoe flash, I find that this is enough of a counterweight for me. If you're putting a strobe on this boom, you're going to want a heavier counterweight. So sometimes I'll use this sandbag as a counterweight and then I'll put the battery down here as well and run the cable down for the battery. And that usually does a pretty good job. So this is the Manfrotto, Frodo, Manfrotto, Frodo, Frodo, boom arm. I keep two other small stands in here. One is just a basic Avenger stand I've had forever. It's a tiny one and it does fine for small work, not in the wind. This stand is a small LumaPro travel stand, and I usually use this for my tethering table. So I'll set this up and put my tether tools table on here. I like that it has a really wide and flat uh, base, so it doesn't fall over easily. I'm pretty confident I can put that down. And it's also more difficult for people to trip over and things like that because of this leg design. And it can hold a light in a pinch. If you're trying to travel really light, it can do that in a pinch. In this side pocket, I have a small Fotix double fold umbrella. There are times that I need to kind of run and gun and be away from all of my gear and I just need something really small and lightweight to go with me. That is here for that. I have my tried and true, always around 60 inch umbrellas. I have one with the black cover on and one with the black cover off. So if I need to do reflective or shoot through at a moment's notice, I can do that. I have a very small 18 inch Okta from Fotix and a speed ring for that in here. Now my two main modifiers I have been using and I'm absolutely in love with are these SMDV speed boxes. They're in these black bags. Let me put one out. This is the 110 centimeter. This is the 70 centimeter. When you pull it out of the, bo out of the bag, you've got all of these ribs in place. And the easiest way I've found to do with this is to lay it flat down on a surface and just start pulling up the ribs. And I usually kind of do every other rib just to get the tension and the shape built and then go finish all the rest of them. There, one more. And that's it. And it's put together. And it's beautiful. I love this thing. This has become kind of my main light. So this is the SMDV 110 centimeter speed box. Love it. I love this box so much. This one is the 70 centimeter. Also with the Bowens S mount. You can get these for different uh, mounts. They have a hot shoe mount and I believe they have Alien B and the like. And you just go around popping these open 
it's so much easier than setting up um, your typical kind of speed ring situation. Now let me show you the one little cheap thing that got me so excited about my entire lighting system. And it's this. This little thing has been the best thing yet. So this little accessory is a hot shoe flash to Bowen's S mount adapter slash bracket. And it's sold under a few different names on Amazon. There's a Godox one, there's a New Ear um, or whatever. And I bought one of each and they were the exact same thing. And I had a hot shoe to Bowen's mount adapter thing before. It was all metal and it had this other bracket and this other bracket and you took the flash and you mounted it and you kind of positioned it. And it was big, it was heavy. In my lighting bag, space is critical that everything has to fit. And that big thing was just stupid. It was too big, it was too heavy, took up too much room. This is awesome. So I just take a flash. Stick it in there, lock that down, put that on whatever stand I'm using, and now I've got the same mount from my Indra to my hot shoe flash. And that has been so great for me. This one piece that's lightweight, affordable, easy to use, has just made my life so much easier. So that means that whatever modifier I want to use, if I want to use it on the strobe, or if I want to use it on hot shoe flash, I can simply mount that here. And now I've got this box over here. Put my Fresnel over here. And vice versa. Yes, and I have one trigger, the Stratos 2 that fires this and it fires that. Notice that there are no pocket wizards dangling off of my light. There are no sync cords that I have to keep up with. It's all built in. It's all one family of triggering system. And it is my hope that in the near future, there will be a universal trigger that I can use on the Phase and the Fuji or whatever camera I'm using that fires them all and controls them all. And that is going to be a beautiful day for me when that happens. So grab your lube and your Kleenex because here comes some gear porn. <laughs>
ton of great lighting systems on the market. Uh, I still have all of my Alien B and Einstein gear, and now that just lives here in the studio and is always here and never leaves. So I still use that in studio. But since most of my work is on location, I really had to put a lot of thought and a lot of time and invest wisely and correctly for gear that was reliable, uh, for gear that I could fly with, and gear that would last me all day on location with batteries, and all of that. And I found that Fotix met all of that. Now I know that there are other systems out there. I looked at the Godox, 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 Godox uh, system. The new AD200, I think it is, is a really interesting light, and they have triggering systems and all of that. But I looked at some of that, and I really didn't feel confident that it could keep up with the travel and the moving around and the living in bags and getting thrown on conveyor belts. And I traveled with the Fotix. I traveled with one Indra for over a year and never had a problem with it. The batteries are great. The system works great. The Fotix has not let me down yet. It was the one system that I could move from strobe to hot shoe flash or mix them and everything worked under one triggering system. Now I still have to walk around and change the, you know, power output and all of that when I need to. Um, that's fine. That's just walking over to a light and pushing a button, turning a dial. It will be nice to do it from camera. And if you're with Canon or Nikon or Sony, they currently do have a system that will allow you to do that and TTL and all of that. I just want a manual trigger system that works. And this is the system that works for me. So now on location, it's all Fotix all the time. I want to note I am not sponsored by them and I am not getting paid to make this video. This is my gear, my stuff. This is what I pick. This is what I chose. This is mine. Thank you very much for watching. The next video coming up will be what's in my camera bag and I'll walk through all of that. If you have questions or comments or anything, hit me up down below and I will try to answer them as soon as I can. Thanks.